I began to write a book in the uh, early 1980s that was uh, ultimately published in 1987 under the title Crisis in Leviathan, Critical Episodes uh, in American uh, Economic History. And uh, that's a book that covers uh, American development in terms of the growth of government from the late 19th century to the late 20th century. But it doesn't cover everything uniformly. As the subtitle suggests, it, it focuses on these so-called critical episodes, which uh, I relate with the, the great national emergency periods, particularly uh, World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II. Uh, to a lesser extent, the, uh, the crisis period that extended from about 1963 to 73, uh, embracing the administrations of uh, Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon. Uh, a, a little less por portentous, perhaps, but uh, only a little less. A in any event, what I did in this book was try to fill in the gap, so to speak. There had been many studies of the growth of government viewed as a, as a long-term phenomenon, something that should be considered as a, a century-long or even longer process and therefore explained by certain slow changes in the structure of the economy or in the makeup of, of society. Uh, demographically or in, in terms of uh, ethnic composition or lots of other uh, aspects of the economic and social structure that, that generally changed slowly and brought about a difference in the, in the social structure and the economic structure of the economy over time with some consequences for how, how well politicians could succeed in their proposals to take various actions for government intervention. Uh, my task in Crisis in Leviathan was different. It was to say uh, those long-term uh, explanations are fine as far as they go, but they don't go nearly far enough because when we look at the profile of how government actually grew, we don't see a smooth growth process extending over a century. Instead, we see a, a s smooth process interrupted periodically by lurches in the, in the size of power and scope of government. And in each occasion, uh, after lurching upward uh, during a war, during the Depression, uh, there was some retrenchment, but only an incomplete retrenchment. And I call this phenomenon the ratchet phenomenon. Uh, a sudden growth of government associated with national emergency, either wartime or economic, uh, was always associated during this period uh, with an incomplete retrenchment, and therefore the the growth of government that proceeded after the emergency uh, took place from a higher baseline. And of course, as one proceeds through several episodes of this sort in succession, one ultimately finds the, the power and the size and the scope of the state at a much higher level than otherwise would have been reached had the old, slow, steady growth of government continued as it was, say, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. So uh, I argued then, and I maintain now, that the, that the growth of government has to be understood as something that has many causes, many sources, but uh, in, in one sense, we can break them down into secular or long-run, slow-acting causes and sudden emergency-related causes. And we've seen, since the publication of that book, uh, another example in the events that followed uh, the attacks of 9-11. And we've seen how the government has taken advantage uh, of the fright that those events created to uh, greatly extend its power, particularly in terms of spending, indebtedness, uh, and surveillance powers over everybody. And uh, so we have a confirmation here uh, of what I argued in the book. And indeed, if one looks at my book and the final page, I forecasted that in the next great national emergency, something of this kind would happen. So uh, to this date, I believe I've passed the test even by uh, positivistic standards of accurate forecasting. But at all events, that book is uh, for the most part a detailed blow-by-blow -blow account of what the government did uh, during the great national emergencies of the 20th century. And uh, I think I do go into more detail than, uh, than other economists have uh, in regard to explaining why uh, the government authorities did what they did, what kinds of uh, lobbies, what kinds of special interests, 
were involved in jockeying for advantage in each case and uh, in showing that, in fact, these national emergencies uh, are more than meets the eye because they're always the occasions on which opportunists, whether economic, political, or social, uh, find it uh, easiest to get what they're seeking. And so uh, we have not just a, a, a vision here of the government uh, as exploiting opportunities based on widespread public fear and uncertainty, uh, but also of many special interests who leap into the fray and also use the opportunity to, to obtain privileges, to ob obtain subsidies, tax advantages, uh, private powers backed by government, all the things that have been responsible for altering the United States from an economy of, of a rather minimal state uh, to its present condition, which is a, a kind of participatory fascism, as I call it, in which special interests, corporate interests, uh, labor interests, environmentalist interests, and a host of others all ally themselves with the state in a way that creates these, uh, these vicious iron triangles. Uh, and the upshot is a hodgepodge of interferences in, uh, in the daily life of everybody and uh, a fearful situation. And uh, I, I think uh, my book, Crisis in Leviathan, does help uh, anyone to gain an understanding of how we got from that old status quo around the beginning of the 20th century to the dire condition in which we find ourselves today.